Hello viewer and welcome back to Games with Dialogue. I'm Dialogue and I'm playing more Pillars of Eternity 2 Deadfire. Uh, without further ado, without any waiting, let's dive in. Because there's some things I want to go over, but we can do it while... I can talk while I'm doing this. Uh, so last time, we, I, wandered around for a little bit, got confused, talked to some people more than once. I saved a dude, I think, I hope. Uh, an explorer. I'll have to check Port Maje to see if he's alive or not. If he made it out okay. And I got my butt handed to me several times in combat. So a lot of fun there. A lot of fun. And now we're back here in Delver's Row. Uh, let's see. Open up the map. I need to talk to Ernezo about getting supplies. I need to talk to the Spindle Man about leaving. I need to talk to Dario about the conch. I'm not okay with the conch that I have, though. I mean, I I have what he wanted, but what I wanted to get was the conch of the deep. So, I'm not going to give it to him just yet. That leaves me with precious few other options. Um, I need to change my group makeup if I'm going to be fighting undead. Oh, come on. One, ah, stop, stop. Ah, yep. I need to lower the, there we go. Uh, go to the gullet. So I'm going to go to, yeah, that's where I need to go. Uh, so I'm going to go to back to the brass citadel and talk with, um, talk with the guy who's trying to sell the gloves and the leader of the Rawatayans, the Deadfire Company. I hope he's still here. Um, it might have been a nighttime thing that I needed to worry about. Ah. Let's see. That's not him. That's not him. I'm going to turn off fast mode. I think I was actually supposed to be here at night. I don't think he's going to show up during the day. Yeah. Under the cover of darkness... Yeah, I don't, I don't think he's here. Well, that's lame. Especially since I can't... Nope, there he is. Yeah. Berteno. Berteno. Okay. Alright. Here we go. Beat it. I don't have time to chit-chat. The thin Valian glances over your shoulder with an expectant frown. Um... You stole a pair of gloves from the dark cupboard. Give them to me. Not a chance, Aimiko. He narrows his eyes at you. Fasina sent you, didn't she? Bostinago, just for these. Shaking his head, he pulls a pair of fine gloves from his pocket, studying them with evident disappointment. Soft as down, but not a single fence willing to pay me a fair price. Maybe they've got imp stink all over them. Uh, you're gonna have a hard time selling an archmage's gloves for fast coin. Eh, uh, I'd be willing to pay for them. Maybe not a, not a chance. Or maybe the stink of failure, you no good thief. Or say nothing. Uh, the first one, I think. You're gonna have a hard time. Should have guessed these were bad luck. Well, it's too late to go making smart decisions, isn't it? He opens his mouth to say more, but something in the southwest distracts him, and his expression fills with dread. Here he comes, and I'm too late. If Hamuto doesn't give me an extension on my debt, I'm a dead man. <laughs> that might be best. Uh, let's go with keep your mouth shut and follow my lead. Glancing at you, Pertano shrugs and swallows down a lump in his throat. I can probably take this guy. Maybe. Nope. <laughs> Not with two gunners. A unit of steely-eyed sailors approaches the docks, clutching pikes and firearms with quiet professionalism. At their head stands a tall Amawo. Again! Ah. <sighs> Stands a tall dude in a mustard yellow uniform. He turns his attention between you and Berteno. So, Berteno, you hired a mercenary. Or else a negotiator. That coin should have gone toward your debt to me. Amato rubs a long scar that extends the length of his neck. Huh? No, I didn't. That is, uh, I would never go behind your back. I 
Reteno's voice falters and he turns to you with sudden panic. <laughs> Reteno, shut up! The adults are talking. I came for a pair of gloves that Pretendo stole. This isn't my problem. Say nothing. Attack. Uh, let's do the top one. I like that. Amudo's eyes brighten and he nods. The soldiers around him chuckle with approval. I like dealing with people of substance. He nods thoughtfully. This is a private matter. Your interference is unnecessary. Amudo spreads his hands in a peaceful manner as his soldiers level their guns at Pretendo. You sound more reasonable than I was led to believe. Well, what is your plan for Berteno? Perhaps I can pay what's owed. Uh, since he can't pay up, take him. Uh, he's coming with me. You sound more reasonable. Yeah, let's let's extend this dialogue. Do I? One can be adherent to the tenets of maritime law and still be seen as a monster. What's your plan? Indentured servitude. I trust this is a more honest and respectable alternative than any pursuit he would take on his own terms. Uh, perhaps I can pay what's owed. You must care a great deal for this insufferable little worm to stake your purse on his freedom. Hamudo taps his lower lip in thought. Four hundred pyres are what Berteno owes. When I will accept that sum to have this sorry business concluded. Only four hundred? Only four hundred. Uh, yeah. Now he's indebted to me. Then our business is concluded. Hamudo signals his men to stand down. After a hateful look... They lower their arms and follow their captain's lead. I... I can't believe I'm finally out of debt. For the first time in my life, I'm free! Reteno clasps his hands together, tears brimming at the corners of his eyes. That's all you have to say on the matter? Technically, you're indebted to me. I like that. Yep, yep. Technically, you're indebted to me. Not anymore, I'm not. Here, catch! He tosses you Rokoa's fingers with casual disdain. It's a new Berteno all the way. Pirate Berteno doesn't get himself in anyone's debt. Laughing in full voice, he makes a hasty exit. Dang, I should have slapped him instead. Well, I did get an item for it. Not that I'm going to be able to keep it, because it has to go back to the store. Uh, well, I guess they're considered a quest item and not actual gear yet, so that's disappointing. Uh, who else did I need to talk to? Fleet Master's office, maybe? No, I think it was um, Imperial Command that I needed to go to. Yeah, I think it's Imperial Command I need to go to. If I'm going to talk to the Dead Fire Company leader. The Ranganui leads us. But he represents all of Raul. Uh, let's see. And that is... Yeah, okay. I was right. If she's there, I was right. Um... I'll find a turn off path. fast travel. Yeah, okay. Karu paces near her desk, looking like a shark circling the shallows. She clenches, clenches a long, elegant pipe between her teeth, the smoke trailing an acrid wake behind her. She looks up when you enter and favors you with a brief nod of acknowledgement. Nice. More quest XP. Continue. The former lord of Kadnua and one-time terrifier of harbor masters. If... Uh, did the... Did the voice just break off there? <sighs> I guess they haven't fixed all the voice dialogue yet. Oh well. She smiles briefly through the smoke. You have not brought much good news of late. Her pensive look returns. So, in addition to pirates, profiteers, and slavers, the dead fire has a vengeful god roaming its waters? She bites down harder on her pipe. Things could be worse. At least it's not Skein. <laughs> uh, not if I can do anything about it. I need to learn more before we speculate. I don't think Aethys intends any harm. Uh, things could be worse. I don't think Aethys intends any harm. If your report is true, he's stumping port down. Yep, there goes the dialogue again. 
Well, that sucks. I don't much care why he's doing it, is what she says at he the end. He must there. be stopped. She halts, turning to face you. You're finally able to get a good look at her. She's not especially large for an Amawa, but she carries her shoulders high. Her weathered face looks to have been seen many storm-blown and sun-beaten days on deck, yet her eyes are sharp and keen. That's why I came to you all at the palace. Uh, he's a giant made of living otter that can abs absorb souls in an instant. Got any ideas? Obviously. No one's got it in for him more than me. First, I need to find him. That's why I came to you all at the palace. She waves a hand dismissively. If there were help to be found at the palace, do you think Deadfire would be such a mess? Yeah, I guess that's a good the point. The Valians won't lift a finger if it isn't to snatch a coin. And the Huana will barely do that much. No one takes charge to solve the big problems. But perhaps we could work together to our mutual benefit. She takes the pipe in her left hand. As she does, you notice that her right is unusually still. Hmm. What do you mean? Look around. Dead fires. Dead fires full of fertile temperate islands. Except for Andra's mortar. It's largely free of rough weather. She waves her right hand and you notice that her fingers remain strangely still. You realize it's a fine prosthetic. Yet much of it is uninhabited. Itinerant tribes drift between some of the islands, and smugglers and slavers cluster around the rest. She shakes her head. It's a waste. Imagine what this place could be. With well-guarded shipping routes, how many Rotonians we could feed with plantations here? Uh, what does that have to do with me? I know perfectly well what that has to do with me. I don't see how you're much different than the other powers here. So you're exploiting, exploiting Deadfire for the sake of Rawatai. Let's do number two. I don't see how much, how you're much different from the others. A raspy laugh rattles from her chest. The Valian Trading Company wants to leech every last coin they can from the Deadfire. No matter the eventual cost. They're little more than thieves. The Principi are actual thieves, no matter their pretensions of nobility. And the Juana are happy to let them all pick away at their f <laughs> What a time to cut off. We're interested in building something here. Pipe in hand, she gestures expensively. <sighs> I'm not sure I agree. So you're exploiting Deadfire for the sake of Rawatai. That's a naive view. One our enemies are keen to promote. She scowls, biting down on her pipe. I'm gonna have to fix this freaking voice thing. It's getting really annoying. Rawatai's violent storms have shaped and hardened us as much as they have our homeland's rocky terrain. But it remains a difficult place to live. So, we rely on trade and on plantations we've established here. And those developments also create a more stable, productive dead fire. <sighs> she spreads both hands wide as if that explains everything. What does that have to do with me? Yeah, let's go down this rabbit hole. You've got a way of charging into things full speed. Some might call it reckless, but I consider it valuable. If you're chasing the god who's stomping this place into the ground, then we have a common goal. And if you're going to survive here, then you could use an ally. A hint of a smile tugs her lips from her tar-stained teeth. Oh, uh, you know, you're right, I do need an ally. The disaster at Hasongo remains a key concern. We rely on the port there to ship food back to Rawatai. She sucks on her pipe, hiding her worried expression behind a cloud of smoke. That's on hold until you investigate. Short of that, there are other matters that demand attention. You've already spoken with Atsura. For now, I suggest you continue to work with him. I might have something for you later. Uh, what's the game board for? What happened to your hand? What's the game board for? Hazatoa. Atsura and I usually have a game running. And this one's been going on for over a month and a half. You know, if you guys were going to add lore to the game... You could have made this a blue thing to explain what the heck Hazatoa is. That might have been fun. Atsura's good at misdirection, but I've got a mind for the long game. 
You look like you've come with a purpose. Yeah, farewell. All right, so Pike leveled up. Great. Let's go find the Valian Company and talk to them. And I think I have one other person in the city to talk to. Oh, Pariki's Overlook. Now that I have the glove backs. The gloves back. I can get a reward for that. Maybe keep the gloves. Let's do that then. Uh, because there was also the Water Shapers Guild in Pariki's Overlook that I did not cover for you guys. Um... Actually, I went in there before I went to the Serpent's Crown, but I cut that out because the episode was running long. So, we'll go to Pariki's Overlook. I will add in the Water Shaper section, and then we will talk to the lady in the shop, whose name escapes me at the moment. Um, let's see. Got covered on which side? How much money do I have left now that I spent... Yeah, alright. So I didn't get any extra cash just yet. Uh, that's fine. That's fine. Alright, let's add in the Water Shaper thing. And then... Yeah, let's add in the Water Shaper thing. And then I will go from there. So I'll see you after that. Alright, let's see here. Uh, fast travels off. Okay, so we'll... Come in here at a normal speed. Takehu. You have shirked your duties for the last time, I say. A guildmaster in fine robes stares down the sizable, blue-skinned Amawa before her. Students observe the exchange in a loose circle, exchanging whispers. Guildmaster, be reasonable. He tosses his an anima... Ah, I forget how to pronounce that. His... Anima? Animone... Anemone? I'm... <sighs> I don't know how to pronounce that. <clears throat> he tosses his hair, which glows faintly as each bulbous strand settles in place. I skipped one lecture to travel up the mountain. Still, the palace is closed until you present me before Onikaza. He crosses his arms and raises one eyebrow. The murmurs of the crowd grow in volume. You went alone. I asked for patience, but as usual, you make a trench out of a tide pool. She pa she pacifies her tone, suddenly conscious of the onlookers. It sounds important, or controversial, or both. Ikira, it's always both where this one is concerned. She nods towards Takehu. My patience wears thin, old shark. You have stifled me enough for one trip through Rakuhu's bowels. In spite of their obvious age difference, Takehu raises an instructive finger to the guildmaster. She flares her nostrils and takes a deep breath. I say Nagati weeps at her petulant spectacle of a child. Uh, he's the child of Nagati? Andra? Goddess of the sea. Ikera, the significance is clearer to some than others. He waves toward the guildmaster with the back of his hand. For a water shaper who treasures his duty to the goddess, you spend too many days cavorting at the brothel. The guildmaster sidesteps to Kehu and takes long strides away from the circle. Sparing another glance at Kehu, the crowd disperses. Ugh, insufferable. Takehu sighs and smooths back his hair. He turns his attention to you with a raised brow. Did you need something? Or is it enough to bask in perfection? Takehu grins and opens a palm, inviting you to speak. Um, have you something to tell the crown? Ikera, I sent the prince a missive and heard nothing back. Takehu crosses his arms and sighs. He is a busy warrior in a time of peace, I say. Um, all right, let's go talk to him together then. Being a watcher tends to open doors. A watcher? And here I am used to being the freak of Pariki's overlook. He rests a hand on his hip and grins. What does a Watcher do? Um... I commune with the spirits of the dead. Ikera, just so. He strokes his chin, nodding. I say I am no sailor, and I know even less about death. I am an artist. He stirs his fingers through the air, drawing together droplets of moisture into an orb of water that floats over his palm. My peers do not understand. He's a waterbender. Water shaping to them is like studying calligraphy. To brew ink and sort parchment. He 
It lets the orb fall to the ground and splash at his feet. Um, let's see. I have nothing against the sensitive artist. If you can do tricks, we should get along just fine. Uh, well, I'm curious to see what you can do. Yeah. The tide brings unexpected gifts. You are not unknown to me, I say. Whispers of an Audra Colossus reach my ears. And louder whispers of a corpse who follows him. Takehu raises one of his brows. What will you do when you catch up to this walking god? Uh... I'm not sure yet. Any ideas? He nods, touching his lower lip and as he weighs the matter with care. I would command the ocean herself to drag him to the bottom of a lightless trench. Takehu shrugs. If it untangles me from the guild's apron strings, then you can mount me as the figurehead of your fair ship. Takehu clines his head and touches the circular marking on his brow. Our quarters may smell a fish before long, but your crew will be more beautiful by association, I say. He winks. All right, let's be Lead off. On. It will be good to put some distance between myself and the guild, even if we find less savory places along the way. A fair warning, Captain. Ingati gifted her favorite son with more than his stunning complexion. Takehu tosses his hair and sighs contentedly. Uh. Uh. Are you hiding in. Uh, what? Can you breathe underwater? Good guess. Only for as long as. Well. Takehu folds his arms and considers. I say you will learn. In time. He winks, his eyes suddenly as dark as beads of polished onyx. Oh, that's not ominous. Uh, I already have a druid and a chanter, so let's make you one of both. And now I can get Percy back in the team. Who am I going to swap out, though? I really didn't need Grog after all, did I? Since I didn't bother to go through. Uh, yeah, let's bring... Yeah, let's bring Percy back in. That was kind of quiet. That was kind of really quiet. I could barely hear what he said. Warua? Warua. Sure. A young Huana holds out his hands as if to catch an incoming missile. He winces in concentration, and an orb of water rises and floats midair. Sweat drips down his nose. He flinches, and in that instant, the water loses all shape and splashes on the floor. Crestfallen, he sighs and drops his stance. Did you need something? He nods to you and shakes out his arms, readying himself for another try. You seem to be having trouble. I can feel the connection to Andre just like Myru taught me. But there's something missing. Maybe it's my form. He frowns to himself. Oh, what's this? Chanter. Ah, Scanlan. Uh, sorry, I have no idea. We can come back and talk to him, That's right? That's okay. Persistence is everything, right? He shrugs. Yeah, we could probably come back and talk to him with Scanlan. I'm not going to lie to him. I didn't even read that option, actually. Can I get in there? It's not locked, right? I've got it. What's this? Exceptional armor? Yeah, 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 yeah. Take it. I know it's stealing, but hey. Take care who can make use of it. Ah, uh, what are you wearing? Who could use... Hmm... I'll give it to one of my spell cat. I'll give it to one of my mages. Sure. All right. Let's go. Let's go. Is there anything else? Guildmaster. All right. Guildmaster. You have questions for me. Speak up, I say. Once a stranger, I say. Now, a familiar face. What do you need? Tell me about the guild. Ikira, my pleasure. 
Water shaping is a talent bestowed on the Juana by the goddess Ngati. Uh, is that's Anna. Andra, yeah. Right. Hariki was the first in recent memory to organize the talent into a series of teachable forms. What else would you like to know? Where do the water shapers get their power? Our art is the yield of the Juana's ancient covenant with the goddess. Our ancestors pledged to protect the luminous Audra, the islands, and the tribes. Ngati gifted us with the strength to keep our promise. Uh, what do you water shapers do exactly? We control tides, prevent storm damage, and keep unwelcome ships at bay. Lately, we haven't experienced an artistic revival of sorts, thanks to our star pupil, Takehu. We represent the best of Juana achievement. No small responsibility. Sure, back to my other questions. Akira, which are freely. none. All right. Well, that was uh, a waste of time. Is there anybody in here? Yeah. Dang it. What's this antidote? Well, I mean, that's not really worth stealing. Yeah. Maybe in the future. There seems to be a lot of uh, emphasis on antidotes, but I haven't been poisoned a whole heck of a lot. That's not stealing. The four forms of water shaping. Grief, hope, metamorphosis, and transcendence. Okay. Understanding that water is more relentless, right? Right. All right. I hope you all read that. What's this? Daraku's reply. Myru. Mm-hmm. Uh-huh. Okay. Uh, wait. I should probably take. I've got. I should probably take both of them, right? They might be important later for a quest. Will do. And... Nah. And what's this? What is this? The Sornate Basin makes a high-pitched ringing sound when pressure is applied around the rim. Guild Ruins. Alright, uh, maybe this is a fight we can go into, hopefully. Get some gear, get some XP... All right, what's down here? Uh, is there a map? Nope. Okay, that means that we might get into a fight. Obsidian small, take all. Thank you. Over here. Oh, -ho. and a door. What's this? First time I'm finding one of those. I've got it. Uh oh. Uh oh. Uh oh. The stone door is sealed shut. A few engraved symbols stand out among the other carvings and inscriptions. Apart from that, you find no evident means of opening the way. The faded inscription is nestled among the elaborate stone carvings. And I don't have enough perception to do... Ah, read the inscription. Juana runes decorate the stone entrance. Nagati would not have gifted her chosen people a watery covenant unless they persisted in deserving it. This sanctum is a covenant of our making. Only the sigil of the covenant... And the words of my devotion will open the way. Hariki, Master of the Guild. Okay. Uh, so I need the sigil, but I know what the words of devotion are. Didn't I just pick up... Uh, Takehu might know. I'd have to swap him out, which means I'd have to go back to my ship. And... Is that it? What are you guys doing down here? Okay. Nothing. Oh, there's more. Okay. I was gonna say, that's, uh... It seems weird that, um... This tiny little room has nothing in it. Uh, trap detected. Yeah, well, I'm not gonna try to steal this right in front of these guys. Or at least not yet. Okay, who? What say, friend? The guild sanctum has seen better days. The young water shaper leans on his broom and smiles at you. What do you do here? Simply a caretaker. I dust off Pariki's tomb and try to keep the place tidy. Okay. Caring for the guild hall usually means drying off what others get wet in practice. 
The Kenu shakes his head with a weary smile. What's behind the stone door, stone door by the staircase? A sanctum for master water shapers, I say. No students or outsiders allowed. I have never been there myself. Myru assures me the room has no need of cleaning. He shrugs, smiling. Are you a water shaper? Akira. One of <laughs> middling skill, if I am generous. Not all of us can boast of Takehu's talent. But Nagati touches us differently, I say. The guild didn't used to allow outsiders the freedom of our halls. Ikira. But how times change. All right, thank you. Uh, let's go down these stairs, I guess. We can look at the statue in a bit. I want to take Just this. Remember, if you die horribly, I can always revive you. And this. I've got it. And can I go out into the water? I bet you there's like some kind of water monster in here. No? Are you kidding? I'll see to it. The tunnel descends sharply into the murky waters. There's no telling how. Okay. Right. I have a feeling that this is. Like if we were trying to break in or something, maybe it's part of Takehu's quest line. I, I just have this weird feeling that. Um, We'll do. This whole thing could be a giant fight if uh, I was trying to break in or something. What is Monsters of the Dead Fire? I think you've read that already. I think I've read that already. I've got it. Potions of Relentless Strike. Oh, yeah. Actually, I need to equip those. So let's do that. Action speed, melee damage, deflection. Negative 10 deflection? Ah. Uh, melee damage. That I'll give to Grog. What about this? Armor rating, armor rating, armor rating. I'll give that to... Pike. Sure. In case she has to go into melee with it. And then this... Some more antidote. Over here. Whoop. Excellent. And the Black Pearl. Black pearls are prized by sailors. Why am I doing the voice of that? Why? Okay. Just remember. And turquoise. Die horribly. Okay. I can always revive you. Uh, all right, let's interact with the statue then. I've got it. The statue depicts a woman, her hand extended and grasping at the air. An eroded plaque sits by her feet. Something about the statue calls out to you. The echo of a fractured soul that tarried in this place for long and thoughtful years. You feel victory tinged by grief and regret. Uh, read the plaque. The words are much eroded and water damaged. But a few choice snippets of phrases stand out with clarity. Pariki, Lore and Hunter, Cross the length of and back again. Remembered for Cunning Deal, uh, Laphis, May her rest, U Ulti, Soul, Freedom. Closer scrutiny reveals that the inscription was purposefully marred. An act of sabotage done, perhaps, years ago. By the Thuranists, you suspect Kith hands. Uh, inspect the lingering soul. Sure, I mean, I am a watcher. Why not take that opportunity? Your vision bobs with the motion of the sea. You stand aboard the deck of swift winds, where your mates sharing amused, self-congratulatory glances as they work. One of them claps your back with approval. You step back and aim a reproachful look at your mate, however friendly his intent. You know there will be time for reprieve when you are squared away in Nekataka. Something cuts through the water to your port side, an enormous shape just beneath the waves. Someone shouts that the winds have turned in your favor at last. This is followed by an enthusiastic cheer among the crew. You don't share their mirth. Eyes to the horizon, I say. You bring home a mighty gift, though it takes an unusual form. One that you pray to Nagati you are able to keep in check. The, div the vision dissipates and your land legs reassert themselves. 
Huh. Sounds like a giant uh, sea creature. Hold her hand. You grasp the hand of the statue with tenderness. At first, nothing happens, but then a tiny droplet of water forms at the corner of her eye and rolls down her cheek, dripping on the floor. Sure, wipe away the tear. You reach out and draw your thumb down the statue's cheek, wiping away the trail of moisture. For a moment, the stone feels soft to the touch. That's weird. Okay, that's weird. Uh, I'm gonna click on it. Will do. Ha ha, some. Eighty-one experience. Okay, let me try to go up here again. I don't think I have what it takes, but uh, I also don't think I should uh, try to steal from that thing with those people standing around it. But maybe I should save and try it. Just. With pleasure. Did that earn me anything? Push against the door? No. 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 Maybe if I talk to the guild master. I'm gonna save real quick. Okay. Now I'm gonna try... I'm gonna try to open that. See what happens. I bet they'll turn hostile immediately. What do we got? Oh, exceptional? What if I just take this one? What if I just take it? The shadow quest failed. The shadow under Nekataka. Ah, yep. They turned hostile as soon as I took it. Alright. That's why you save. Load. That's why you save. <laughs> I knew they were going to turn hostile. That armor, though, exceptional. Ah, oh, dang it. All right, let's go upstairs and see if I can talk to the guild master about that. Otherwise, Takehu is probably my best option. I'm betting, though, that uh, it's like a giant sea creature that they have to keep fed or something like that. That's just a guess, though. Once a stranger, I say. Now, Tell me the about the guild. Like, Hariki was the first in recent memory. What else would you like to know? Uh, it doesn't. Okay, never mind. Let's just leave then. We'll have to come back with uh, Takehu. In maybe in the next game. Who knows? All right. Well, with that taken care of, let's uh, level up Pike. What am I gonna give her though? Stealth? I could give her explosives, but I think I'm gonna go with alchemy or athletics. They, with patch 101, 1.1, they really nerfed athletics. I think I might retrain and get rid of that for her. Oh, uh, let's go with stealth, since she's usually in the front line and I need her stealth to be better. And religion. Well, yeah, I should also retrain out survival and diplomacy, I think. Let's go with history. Uh, and then these. Penetration with fire, penetration with electricity, penetration, yeah, with corrosive. Okay, let's not worry about that then. Spells. Litany for the body. That would be useful, maybe. Negative 10, all defenses, burn damage. I don't know. Uh, my priest is more of a buffer than an attacker. Imparts to allies the fervor of righteousness in battle, granting them strong. Eh. Whenever they deliver a killing blow, they regain health. That's so situational, though. Creates a large zone of divine shelter, granting allies a bonus. Yes! All defenses. Yes. Let's see. Friendly AoE, might, accuracy, foe. Yes. That one, too. Wait, what's this one? Frightened? Nah. Okay. That's good for her. <clears throat> can I keep these gloves? She wants them back, but maybe I can get her to let me keep them. Fasina, that's your name. 
You're back. Kue, any news? Um... Yeah, I took care of Proteno's debt. You are willing to put up all that money? One of her eyes narrows on you. What of the gloves? What happened to them? Oof. Give the gloves back. I want to keep them. Ah, I want to keep them, but... The character's not really a liar. That's not the... That's not the personality I'm building for this. Uh, what about... Ah, but I don't think I can keep... Uh, there's no other way to get them... Other than lying about it. Unless I try to steal them later. Shoot. Well, I might as well... I might as well make some money off of it if I have to give them back. Have we come to this then? Am I really paying for my own property? Fine. 500 pyres. Sure. Bertenno has cost me enough already. At least it's over now. At least I know Arkmir won't feed me to the imps. She folds the gloves with care and stows them away. Take your discount as well. If the cupboard doesn't make its goals, so be it. Uh, okay. Farewell. Maybe I can buy... Do you look for something in particular? Uh, I have to go to the imp to buy things. And he's gone. Great. And what was this one again? Salutations. Do you wish to hear your fortune? Oh, Only I was told you broke in... Oh, okay, I can do this now. What? Am I famous out there or something? Tell you what. 500 pyres, and you get the... I just got story. that money back from... Ah! Oh. No, I don't want to do that. What about this? Intimidate? No. I don't have enough. What could you possibly want with money? I need to buy my way out of here somehow. 500 pyres greases the gears. Oh, I see. Well, never what, mind. What, on coin? <laughs> now I've heard everything. I said farewell. I don't want to talk to you. Hassle me about that. I've seen much nicer lately. Said hello before she kicked me. <laughs> Progress, eh? Shop Imp gestures towards the wares in an encouraging manner. I'm looking for Ephraim. Who's Ephraim? Dead thief? Check box. He's still rattling around in there. The imp chuckles at this. A wet, unpleasant sound. Oh, Ephraim is the right. Uh, let me see what you have. Now, do I have enough? Let's see. Weapons. Exceptional. God, look at how much it costs for an exceptional. And, of course, all the magic stuff is still out of my price range. Of course. Ring of Focused Flame. Accuracy with fire attacks. Spellkeeper. Against spells. Spell cash. Scroll disappears when combat ends. Oh, that one's actually nice. And I can buy back Rakoan's fingers. Amulet of Health. Yeah, whatever. Whatever. I might as well spend that 500 to break into his... I might as well spend that 500 to get the story of how to break in. Uh, we'll come back here later, though. It's a three red skull quest, so I don't think I'll be able to accomplish it right now. Let's go back to the birth. And see if we can't talk to the Valians. And then we'll probably end the episode there, because we've already been doing a lot of talking as it is. Yep. And see if I can't find that um, Huana to give the contract to. So my guess, my best guess, is that the Valian Trading Company has set up shop here. Or in the mill. Because they're not in the Brass Citadel, and they're not in the stairs. I'm such a dummy. I'm such a dummy. The Valiant Trading Company is right across from the Wild Mare. Ugh. Hi. <sighs> I don't know what I was thinking, but it wasn't with my head. That's for sure. Is the, um... I don't think that's... That's Luca. That's the guy 
Nice day out, isn't it? I bribed to give me... Where is... Oh, there he is, right there. Hey, Akira, guess what? I've got news for you. What say, friend? He to touches his brow in greeting. A strange smell follows you, I say. I hope you're not unwell. Forget the smell. Your village is safe from the trading company. Luca listened to reason. The Duop will keep their island. Um... Yep, forget the smell. Well... I mean, they're all three the same thing. Tell Yoranga that a vis his village is safe from the outsiders. Yeah, let's do number two. Luca listened to reason. Akira, I cannot believe. A light after our long sorrow. His smile broadens and Tawan slaps your shoulder with encouragement. My village is modest, but I came prepared. I set aside a few gems for trading. They are yours by right. Thank you. I'll accept whatever payment you have to offer. Mm. <laughs> Seashells from the natives. Isn't this quaint? This is all. I assume you paid for food. Yeah, thank you. I'll accept whatever payment you have to offer. You are a friend of the Duape. We do not forget. Tawenu smiles, rolling his shoulders with the ease of one who stands suddenly taller. Two emeralds and a mother of pearl. Well, I mean, it's something, right? That's great. All right, let's go inside. Talk to whoever it is that's in charge here. I forget their name, okay? Let's see. Is it... That should be this one, right? I've got it. Yeah, it should be this one right here. Huh. I'll get it open. Oh, it might be after hours. That might be the problem. Let's turn off fast travel then. Nope. It's right there. Let's talk to him. Yep. Standing next to her desk and lost in thought, Governor Alvaria looks up at your approach. Her expression of intent focus thaws instantly, and she greets you with a startlingly sunny smile. The Watcher. From the palace, yes? You made quite the impression on the Cantonese. He went on for ages. Welcome. Make yourself comfortable. Um, uh, maybe the Conte... Uh, yeah, maybe that's who I should have talked to. I am Lueva Alvari, governor in residence of the Villian Trading Company here in Nekataka. What brings you to my door? I've come from Port Maje. Governor Clario suggested that the trading company might have worked for me. I've met your representatives in the palace. They mentioned you might have work for a watcher. Are you in charge here? Let's do number two. The palace. They speak the truth. A watcher is welcome in these times. Under different circumstances, I'd write up papers for an emissary's posting, no? But we have a situation that needs immediate attention. How much do you know about the luminous Adra trade? Hmm... Mm. What's your interest in the Adra? I know that. Uh, let's say I heard enough from the governor. Ak, he does love a good speech, Ikozi. Some weeks ago, we received word of a large quantity of luminous Adra on a distant island. Pukukohara, it is not charted on any of our maps. However, Pukukohara is said to neighbor the island of Tikawara, and we've already made contact with the natives there. We dispatched an expedition to Tikawara with instructions to locate the Adra site and determine its value. Our people have neither returned nor sent any word on their progress. Kawari spreads her hands in a gesture of helplessness. We are too long a delayed, and someone must finish the job. A watcher can determine if there is essence in the Adra, if it is worth the trouble and investment to remove it. Information for which we are willing to pay. Ah, I see. Okay, well, intellect and diplomacy. If I'm to sail to Tikawara, I'll need to purchase some supplies. Yes, I take your meaning. Here, a taste of what's to come. <gasps> Another thousand? This will be of some use to you, I think. It entitles you to act as a commissioned agent of the Valiant Trading Company. Present it and you will be recognized as such. 
Avari presses a document into my hands. Your hands. I'm not going to do that first person. Nope. Until then, I believe we're finished. Return here once you have word of our agents and our prize. Oh, and take care upon the open sea. There are greater hazards in these waters than a few pirates. Mm-hmm. Like giant krakens? I'm sure. Uh, two people leveled up. That's great. Should I go upstairs? I don't know if I can. BTC Archive. Did I actually get a chance to... Why can't I... Come on. Click on it! Ugh. I'm clicking on the person, which is just not... Uh, okay. Fine. Yeah, that's that's not anything I care about. Can I go upstairs? Wasn't there somebody upstairs I could talk to? Let's see. Yeah, it was the director's office that I wanted to talk to. Except the guards won't let me? Oh, it's probably the time of day, right? Right, 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 right. Rest or wait? Let's rest. Resting is not allowed in this area. No, okay, never mind then. Well, let's let's end the episode here. Anyways, we've come this far. Um, you know what? Before I do that, I'm gonna level up the both of them, and then I'm gonna end the episode. Uh, let's see, mechanics, sleight of hand, or stealth. Let's do... Hmm. I want to get some alchemy in for him. And... Bluff is just such a waste. I don't really care at all about bluff. Mostly because I'm going to intimidate or diplomatize. But, um... So let's streetwise it up. And then... See, 100% of incoming grazes converted to misses from attacks that target reflex. Well, I like that. The rogue's engagement limit increases, and enemies engaged by the rogue are distracted. What does distracted do? Negative 5 perception and flanked. Oh, so anytime I engage an enemy, they automatically become flanked. I don't have to worry about positioning. Or anything like that. That might be a useful one to take. Gain additional defense against disengagement. That also might be useful. We'll see. Um, untargetable, invisible. The rogue travels through the beyond, appearing at a specific location and expertly avoiding the next attack. Afterwards, the rogue is temporarily invisible. That one would be useful. Shadow step. The rogue breaks engagement. Expertly avoids the next attack. Diving out of range. Afterwards, the rogue's next weapon attack paralyzes the target. I like that better. Absolutely. We'll take that one. And what's this? If successful, weakened. Weakening the target. Ooh, that's good too. I don't... Uh... Ah, let's take the weakening, and then we'll take the passive another time. Oof. That's rough. I want that. I want both of those things. Alright, Keyleth, and then we'll end. Let's see. Uh, let's give you Arcana for the spell scrolls. Eh, I might change your hair, too. I'm not happy with that. Um... And then... Metaphysics? Yeah, because I'm... I really doubt I'm going to be using her and Gilmore in the same team. So, they both can go with Metaphysics. What's this? Conjure Blight. Oh, finally! And Greater Burn? With no, greater knowledge of the forces of nature, inflict even more burn. That can wait. Increased penetration with acid and decay, frost and water, 
Fire and electricity. Okay, what about spells? Form of the allies gain a protective layer of wooden skin imbued with the care. Eh, maybe, maybe. I want some attacking abilities. Dealing pierce damage, knocking them prone. Now well, that might be useful. Prone's pretty good. Everyone in the cone takes burn damage and is pushed back. Hailstorm. Crush and freeze. What does Blizzard do? Freeze. Just freeze damage. And slow attack speed. Alright, we'll take that one. And... If successful, hobbled. Overwhelming wave. Crush. Stun. Or Moonwell. And we'll take Moonwell as well. She'll be kind of a priest, kind of a spellcaster. I'm okay with that. Actually, I think I made a mistake with her. I'm almost positive I made a mistake with her. What's this one? Health restored, three per second. And... Health restored, all defenses. Yeah, I didn't want to pick the same... I didn't want to pick both spells from that. I should have actually picked something else for Moonwell. We'll keep it for the time being. I might actually find a use for both of them in combat. Um... So until next episode, until the next time I see you, stay safe and God bless you.